Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be working on our shop menu. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. So where we left off in the last episode is where we run our game. We are left with the menu here at the top, the cash, the wave, the health, and then the build menu. And we need to have a button right here. So let's create that button. I've already gone ahead and created a few different groups here. So we have the buttons and the shop and then a panel that we'll, we will be using. So the first thing I want to do is create a panel and this is just going to hold the shop menu. So I want to call it object UI, let's say panel shop, and then I will assign it the sprite. And this particular sprite that we're going to be using is nine sliced. So you can take a look at it and I will have a link in the description for a nine slice video. So with the shop panel, we're going to have a create event, and then we will also have a step event. Now the shop panel is going to have a few different things. It needs a position when it's hidden. Then we also need a position when we are showing the panel. And I will be lurping in between these two positions. So I need an intermediate value. And by default, I'm just going to hide the panel whenever it gets displayed on the screen. Now I need a way to open and close this. So I'm going to create two objects in the shop. I'm going to name the first one UI close, and I will name the second one object UI shop. So back in the panel, very bottom here, we need to instantiate this close button and hook it up to the shop panel. So I'll create a new instance. I'll call it instance button close. And we are going to create a new instance by using instance create depth. And we will pass in an X and Y value of the original X, Y position of our panel. We'll use depth minus one to put it on top. And then we want to pass in the object, which is object UI close. Now to hook up this particular instance with the panel, we will use a parent variable, which we are going to create. And we will just set it to the panel itself. So just what's going to happen is whenever this panel's event create happens, it's going to create this object and then it's going to associate itself with the particular parent, which is our panel. So let's switch over to this particular object here. In this object, we need a create event, we need a step event, and we also need a mouse and left release. In the create event, we'll set up that parent so that we can access it throughout our code. Because we made an actual object in the step event, what we want to do is check the parent. And if we have a parent, then we're going to follow the parent on the X position and follow the parent on the Y position at the very bottom. Before I forget, I'm also going to change my sprite. And if I go over to the left release, I want to first make sure that we have a parent. So checking that parent does not equal none. And then we are going to call a function that doesn't exist yet on that panel. And the function that is going to be called is called Hide. So if we go up to the panel again, at the very bottom, we're going to be using some new 2.3 functions. So the first one we're going to write is hide and it's a function that accepts no parameters. And basically all we are going to do is we're going to change the X and Y position. So this panel is going to be running off the current position. So we need to change the X and Y position for, for current to be the hidden positions that we have at the top here. That means we can write the inverse whenever we need to show this particular panel and just change the X, Y positions to the shown X, Y positions. So how this is all going to work is whenever we click from the UI close, it's going to go to the pair object and run the hide function. And in this particular instance, the hide function is going to be changing our X and Y positions. So to get it working for inverse for the show, we'll go to the object shop. We'll create the sprite here, or we will assign it. We will have it a create event, a step event, and then just like before, the mouse and left release. For this particular one, we also need to set up a parent. I'll just be using instance panel to keep things a little bit different. For the step event, we need to check for the actual panel that we're going to be looking for in every step. So we're saying if this instance panel equals no one, then we want to check for the UI panel shop. And we want to make sure that we find the first one and then store it in this variable. So this will run until this UI shop is found within their scene. Now in the left release, we just have to do the inverse. If we have an instance panel, then we are going to run the show function. So the last thing we're going to do is put the panel in our room and then hook up the button to our UI master. So we'll open up our room here, click on the panel and click on the UI. And I'm just going to drop it in somewhere. 
It is very small, so we'll expand it out and then double click so we can edit the values. I'm going to change my values for the scale to be 32.85 and the Y scale 124.2. And then I'll set the X and Y positions to the hidden positions at the start, 1504 and 320. That will bring it down just a little bit. The final thing we need to do is we need to load up our UI master. And right here where we have the to do build, we will use an instance create depth. We'll pass in an X parameter of 1312 and a Y parameter of 32. And we'll just have the depth to be minus one. So it's on top of our bar. And then we need to change this to be the actual shop button. And if you're wondering how I got these values, I basically opened up the room. I took the UI shop button here and I placed it in the room until I thought it was at a good location. And then you could use these values here. So let's run our game and see if we have any errors. And I currently have one error, so let's fix that. It's in the instance panel store is not set in the shop step line three. We'll come over and we'll just fix this up. And now let's run it again and see if we have any more errors. And if we click the build menu, currently we've missed a step. So let's close it. Let's go back into the actual panel here. And if we go to the step event, we forgot to fill this in. So what I want to do is I want to use the middle value here, which is our current position. And we're going to lerp the current position with our X and Y position. So now whenever the current position changes to the shown or the hidden values, we will have different values to move to. So now let's hit F5 again. Let's try and click on our button and we can click the X and the panel will close. So that's the first step to getting our build menu working here. The next step will be putting on some actual towers that we can select and placing them within our map. Thank you all for watching. I'm sorry about my voice in the video. My allergies were acting up pretty bad at the time of recording. Please leave a like or comment down below and check out my Patreon site for more tutorials, downloads, and early access to videos. A special shout out to the following users in no particular order. Darfull, Victor, Edward, Ashby, Ian, Robert, Angel, Annie, Vil, Paul. Once again, thank you everyone for the continued support.